Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system, big enough to hold more than a thousand Earths inside. But it is also like a miniature solar system of its own, with its immense gravity, powerful storms, and dozens of moons. From its role as Earth's protector, to its potential as a danger, from its surprising ring system, to its massive lightning storms, Jupiter is much more complex than most people think. And in today's video, we will discuss the lesser known facts about the king of planets that will change the way you see it. Jupiter is located about 778 million kilometers away from the Sun, roughly five times farther than Earth. Its orbit takes nearly 12 Earth years to complete. Despite that distance, Jupiter can outshine most nighttime objects. Let's talk scale. Jupiter's diameter is about 143,000 kilometers, more than 11 times Earth's diameter. In terms of volume, you could fit 1,300 Earths inside Jupiter. And if we lump together every other planet in the solar system, Jupiter alone would still outweigh that entire group. This is why it's often called the king of the planets. One of the first things you'll notice is that Jupiter rotates incredibly fast. A single day on Jupiter, meaning one full rotation on its axis, takes about 9 hours 55 minutes near the equator. Because of this rapid spin, Jupiter bulges around its middle, making it more oval, or oblate, than perfectly round. This high-speed rotation also powers extreme weather patterns. Jupiter's swirling cloud bands work like giant jet streams moving in opposite directions, creating storms that can last for centuries. It helps to think of Jupiter as a small solar system of its own. As of now, it has 95 officially recognized moons, each with its own quirks. Some, like Callisto, are covered in craters, while others, such as Io, are incredibly volcanic. Ganymede is actually the largest moon in the solar system, even bigger than the planet Mercury. On top of that, Jupiter has a faint ring system, more on that later, making it look somewhat like a mini-star with its own orbiting worlds. Many astronomers even call Jupiter the gatekeeper of the inner solar system because its huge gravity affects how asteroids move and might protect Earth from frequent impacts. But Jupiter has some surprises you might not expect. Let's begin with one that catches many people off guard, its hidden rings. When people think of planetary rings, Saturn usually comes to mind because its rings are bright and striking. Jupiter's rings are far more subtle, so faint that you wouldn't see them through an ordinary backyard telescope. The first confirmed photos of these rings came from Voyager 1 in 1979. After that, Voyager 2 and later missions like Galileo and Juno gave us more clues. Unlike Saturn's rings, which are mostly chunks of water ice ranging from pebble size to huge boulders, Jupiter's rings are mainly made of tiny dust particles. Dust doesn't reflect much light, so Jupiter's rings stay dim. They're easier to spot when they're backlit by the sun, which makes the dust glow a bit from behind. Scientists generally split Jupiter's rings into a main ring, plus two thinner gossamer rings. They're all extremely thin, only a few thousand kilometers thick but they stretch out for more than 100,000 kilometers from Jupiter's center. That may sound huge in ordinary terms, but for a planet as large as Jupiter, these rings are relatively modest. Where does this dust come from? Mostly from tiny meteoroids hitting Jupiter's smaller moons, like Metis, Adrastia, Amalthea, and Thebe. When these small space rocks crash into the moons, they kick up dust that drifts into orbit around Jupiter. Over time, the dust spreads out into a ring shape. Jupiter isn't alone. Uranus and Neptune also have ring systems, although all of them pale in comparison to Saturn's. Still, Jupiter's rings show us that rings aren't particularly rare. Many big planets might have them at some point. So yes, Jupiter does have rings, even though they're faint compared to Saturn's. But that's just one part of a much bigger story. Jupiter is mainly made of hydrogen and helium, the same two elements that dominate our sun. This is why some call Jupiter a failed star. It has the right ingredients, but not nearly enough mass to start fusion. If Jupiter were about 75 to 80 times heavier, the pressure and temperature in its core would be high enough for hydrogen atoms to fuse into helium, just like our sun does. At that point, Jupiter would have become an actual star. 
but calling Jupiter a failed star can be misleading. Stars generally form by collapsing directly from enormous clouds of gas. Giant planets, on the other hand, are thought to start as rocky or icy cores that gather a huge layer of gas from the protoplanetary disk around a young star, a process called core accretion. Jupiter likely formed quickly and grabbed most of the hydrogen and helium left in the early solar system. Then, strong solar winds from the young sun blew away the remaining gas, so Jupiter stopped growing. It's not that Jupiter tried to become a star and failed, it just formed in a different way. There are space objects called brown dwarfs, heavier than planets like Jupiter, but not heavy enough to keep hydrogen fusion going. Brown dwarfs can fuse deuterium, a heavier form of hydrogen, for part of their lives before that process stops. They're like a midpoint between true stars and giant planets. Jupiter, at about 1 80th the mass needed for full hydrogen fusion, doesn't even qualify as a brown dwarf. It's firmly in the category of massive planet. Even though it's not a star, Jupiter gives off more heat than it gets from the Sun. This heat comes from what's called the Kelvin-Helmholtz mechanism. As Jupiter formed, it contracted under its own gravity, turning gravitational energy into heat. After 4.5 billion years, it's still slowly releasing some of that heat. This makes Jupiter glow in infrared, though not anywhere near bright enough to be visible as a star. With so much mass, Jupiter's gravity is incredibly strong. In fact, the Sun and Jupiter both orbit a shared center of mass, the barycenter, that isn't located right at the Sun's center. Astronomers use this same type of wobble motion to detect exoplanets around other stars. Jupiter spins quickly, and this rotation helps power its magnetic field, the strongest of any planet. At Jupiter's cloud tops, the magnetic field is about 14 times stronger than Earth's, and it can be even stronger closer to its metallic hydrogen interior. If you could see Jupiter's magnetosphere, it would form a giant bubble stretching millions of kilometers out into space. Io, one of Jupiter's moons, plays a key role in fueling the planet's magnetosphere. Its intense volcanic activity releases huge amounts of sulfur and oxygen ions into space forming a donut-shaped ring of plasma around Jupiter. These charged particles get swept up by Jupiter's magnetic field, helping to power its stunning auroras. Unlike Earth, where auroras are mostly triggered by solar wind during geomagnetic storms, Jupiter's auroras are driven not just by the Sun, but also by the planet's rapid rotation and the steady flow of ionized gas from Io. As a result, Jupiter's auroras are incredibly powerful and nearly constant, changing in brightness rather than appearing and disappearing like those on Earth. Seen through the Hubble Space Telescope and the Juno spacecraft, Jupiter's auroras glow brightly in ultraviolet and infrared light. They form glowing rings around the planet's poles, sometimes pulsing or spiraling as charged particles race along magnetic field lines and crash into Jupiter's upper atmosphere. You may have heard people call Jupiter Earth's protector, or a cosmic vacuum cleaner. The idea is that its huge gravity captures or deflects comets and asteroids away from our planet. But the reality is more complicated than that. Because Jupiter is so massive, it warps the space around it more than the other planets do. When comets from the outer solar system or stray asteroids from the asteroid belt come near Jupiter, the planet may fling them right out of the inner solar system. Sometimes Jupiter captures them into short period orbits around the sun. In other cases, it throws them outward, shielding Earth from possible collisions. But there's a downside. That same strong gravity can also nudge some objects into paths that aim them toward the inner planets. Some scientists say that while Jupiter does protect us in many cases, it can also send dangerous objects our way once in a while. A famous example of Jupiter's protective side is Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9, first observed in 1993 after it broke into multiple pieces. All those fragments slammed into Jupiter in July 1994. Telescopes around the world, including Hubble, watched it happen, leaving huge scars in Jupiter's atmosphere. Each impact was like millions of atomic bombs exploding. If something like that had hit Earth instead, it would have been catastrophic, possibly an extinction event. Still, scientists debate how much overall protection Jupiter gives us. Many models say Jupiter reduces the likelihood of impacts on Earth. 
Around 4 billion years ago, the solar system went through a phase called the Late Heavy Bombardment, with Earth and the other inner planets constantly bombarded by meteorites. Some theories suggest Jupiter's movements, migrating slightly closer to the Sun, then moving back out, helped scatter leftover chunks of rock and ice, creating that surge of impacts. Paradoxically, that same scattering may have delivered water and organic materials to Earth, helping life get started. So Jupiter can be both a shield and a source of chaos. Most likely we get fewer impacts overall thanks to its gravitational influence, but it may also be responsible for sending a few into the inner solar system. If Jupiter weren't so massive, Earth might have been hit more often, which could have halted or severely delayed the development of life here. Jupiter has a storm so large it could swallow Earth whole and still have room left over. I'm talking about the Great Red Spot, or GRS, one of the most famous features in the solar system. For centuries, astronomers have observed this enormous vortex, wondering what fuels it and how it's lasted so long. The Great Red Spot has probably been raging for at least 300 to 350 years. Some accounts trace it back to the 17th century, possibly noted by Giovanni Cassini or Robert Hooke. Over time, observers have recorded changes in its size, color, and shape, but it has remained a nearly constant presence in Jupiter's southern hemisphere. On Earth, hurricanes and cyclones are low-pressure systems, but Jupiter's red spot is a massive high-pressure bulge spinning counterclockwise, with wind speeds that exceed 400 miles, or approximately 640 kilometers per hour. It stays around the same latitude, though it shifts in longitude. Its distinctive color ranges from deep red to lighter shades. The exact cause of the red color is still debated. It might be linked to chemical reactions among ammonia, acetylene, and other gases high up in Jupiter's atmosphere, triggered by sunlight. One big development is that the Great Red Spot has been shrinking in recorded history. In the late 1800s, it was estimated to be about 41,000 kilometers wide, large enough to fit three Earths. Recent observations show it has contracted to roughly 16,000 kilometers, about 1.3 times Earth's diameter, and has taken on a more circular shape. Some scientists think it could keep shrinking over the coming decades or centuries, but we're not sure if that's a permanent trend or part of a natural cycle. The storm extends hundreds of kilometers into Jupiter's atmosphere, and the deeper levels don't always match the patterns we see at the top. This tells us there are complex, multi-layer processes going on. Some think smaller storms feed the GRS with energy, or possibly break it down when they merge. If it loses more energy than it gains, it might keep shrinking. On the other hand, Jupiter's atmosphere is dynamic, so there might be future changes that boost its size again. But the Great Red Spot is just one part of a wild atmosphere. From huge lightning bolts to strangely arranged cyclones near the poles, Jupiter's weather features go far beyond anything on Earth. Spacecraft like Voyager, Galileo, and Juno have confirmed that lightning on Jupiter is not only real, it's incredibly powerful. A single bolt can be tens or even hundreds of times more energetic than a typical lightning strike on Earth. These flashes often happen deep in Jupiter's water cloud layer, suggesting that thunderstorms there might form when water vapor, ammonia, and other chemicals mix. Sometimes, when the sun lights up Jupiter's night side, bright, quick bursts appear on top of its clouds. These are lightning flashes lighting up the upper atmosphere. Each flash comes from tall storm clouds where strong winds carry water and ammonia high above the main cloud layer. This creates electric charge, just like thunderstorms on Earth, but much bigger. Jupiter's poles have long-lasting cyclones arranged in neat patterns with a ring of large storms around one in the center. Data from the Juno spacecraft is helping scientists understand why these storms stay stable and keep their nearly perfect shape. Narrow wind paths separate each cyclone, stopping them from merging into one huge storm. Beyond water clouds, Jupiter's atmosphere can include clouds of ammonia ice and possibly ammonium hydrosulfide. Some scientists think ammonia hailstones, called mush balls, might form in the turbulent lower layers and then fall downward. 
If you enjoyed learning about Jupiter, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell for more stories about the universe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.